Welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be discussing uh, Form 1 Chemistry and our topic for today is called Water and Hydrogen and our subtopic that we are going to be working on is the burning candle in air which we are going to relate with the active parts of air. So the lesson we are going to begin with the introduction bit of sources of water since we are starting a new topic, uh, water and hydrogen. And then later on, we are going to look at the experimental uh, experiment on burning candle in air uh, so that we can be able to determine uh, what happens uh, when candle is burnt and what are the products. And then later on, we are going to look at a few questions in regards to what we are going to discuss today. So we will begin with the introduction bit. Uh, water is the most abundant substance on the Earth's crust. It actually covers around 71% of the Earth's surface. And this water usually comes from seas. It can come from lakes. It can come from uh, rivers. It can come from oceans. Uh, these are some of the sources of water. So first of all, we know we can be able to obtain uh, this water also in the laboratory. And one way is burning candle in air. So this leads us to the experiment for the day. So burning candle works in air. So this is a procedure for the experiment. First of all, the candle was lit under the filter funnel. And then the suction pump was turned on. We are going to discuss later on the function of this suction pump and its role in our experiment. And then the setup was left undisturbed for 15 minutes. So this was our setup. You can see the candle is burned on this uh, filter funnel. And then uh, it leads to a test tube A. The test tube A contains anhydrous uh, copper 2 sulfate. And this test tube has been dipped in a, a trough or beaker containing cold water. We are going to see the function of this cold water as well. And then we have another tube leading to test tube B, which contains lime water. And we can see the suction pump, which we said was turned on when the experiment began. So let's uh, look at some of the observations you are able to notice in this experiment. And we are going to discuss also those observations. So first of all, the candle continues to burn. And then uh, there was some colorless uh, liquid in tube A. So the tube that is placed in the cold water, some of the colorless liquid were noticed in this tube after some time. And then this colorless liquid, remember it's cooling and then dropping on this anhydrous copper 2 sulfate. Anhydrous copper 2 sulfate is white in color from the diagram below. And when the colorless liquid dropped on it, it's turned into blue. So anhydrous copper 2 sulfate turned to uh, blue. So, and then if you are using anhydrous colba 2 chloride, which is blue in color, it will turn to pink. And then another observation we notice is in test tube B, where we had the lime water. So after those 15 minutes, there was a white precipitate that was noticed on this test tube. And we are going to discuss later on why there is this white precipitate, as you can see from the image. And then also after some times, there were some black solid on the inner sides of the funnel that were noticed. So those are some of the observations that were noticed. Next, uh, let's look at why these observations were noticed or some of the explanations to these observations. So first of all, the suction pump ensures continuous supply of air. So I said that the suction pump is very important. And this is because it usually uh, pushes air in the apparatus. It, it ensures that continuous, continuous movement of air. Otherwise, this air would accumulate in this filter panel and it wouldn't move throughout the apparatus. So that is the reason why the candle continues to burn. 
And then when candle burns in oxygen, it forms carbon four oxide and steam. So how can we be able to show that from the observations that we were able to discuss? First of all, the carbon four oxide is sucked through the apparatus. It goes up to apparator B. In the apparator B, remember we have that suction pump that is doing the sucking. And then in apparator B, we have lime water, which is also referred to as calcium hydroxide. So this calcium hydroxide reacts with uh, the carbon four oxide to form a white precipitate. And the name of the white precipitate is calcium carbonate. So this is a calcium carbonate that forms a white precipitate. And then remember we said there are some black specks that are going to be formed on the funnel. They're usually formed when the carbon burns incompletely or there is an incomplete combustion of the carbon which causes uh, the carbon particles to be burned. If they are not burned completely to form carbon dioxide, they are left behind. And that is the reason why we have them. Actually, candle is actually forms a luminous flame. When we will discuss, we discuss this uh, in the apparatus or substances used in burning or heating in the lab. We talked about the candle and we said the candle produces a luminous flame. So that is the reason why there are some carbon particles that are being deposited because the carbon is not burned completely. So the next observations we said before we go to the water that is produced or the steam. So when we look at the equations of this reaction of carbon with oxygen, first of all, we know carbon reacts with oxygen to form carbon four oxide. You can see the reactant is carbon and oxygen, and then the product is carbon four oxide. And then also another thing we notice is is that the hydrogen also reacts with oxygen to form water. So let's talk about the observations we noticed on the anhydrous copper 2 sulfate. Water actually is the one that turns anhydrous copper 2 sulfate from white to blue. And the white is referred to as anhydrous. Anhydrous means it does not have any water of crystallization. While with, when the white anhydrous copper 2 sulfate changes to blue, we refer to the blue product as hydrated. Hydrated means that it, that it has water of crystallization. It has water of crystallization. So this is what causes that change. We said another alternative that can be used is the anhydrous cobalt 2 chloride. This anhydrous cobalt 2 chloride is usually blue in color. So if you had a few drops of the water, it's going to change to pink. And this pink is what we refer to as hydrated. It's referred to as hydrated cobalt 2 chloride. So those are the changes. So this actually forms the test for water. So these are the two chemicals, both anhydrous copper 2 sulfate and anhydrous cobalt 2 chloride are used to test for water. Next, we talked about the formation of the black deposit. So let's look at the chemical equation for that. So the black deposits are formed from the incomplete combustion of the carbon in the candle. So the carbon reacts with oxygen. Some of the carbon are changed into carbon four oxide, while some do not burn. So these are the ones that are deposited as the black deposits. And then we noticed also in the test tube B, we talked about the calcium hydroxide, which is also referred to as lime water. So we said that the lime water turned into a white precipitate. How do we present that in a chemical equation? So first of all, carbon four oxide reacts with calcium hydroxide. Our carbon four oxide is colorless in nature. 
Our calcium hydroxide is also a colorless solution. They both react to form a white precipitate. That white precipitate is referred to as calcium carbonate. And remember also water is formed. That's why it is in solution state. So this white precipitate is in the water. We basically say that this is in solid state. But because it's dissolved in water, we are able to see that white precipitate. Next, we talked about the steam forming. We said that the steam condenses into water in the boiling tube. So this is actually the purpose of the cold water in the beaker. It actually helps to condense the steam into water. That is the reason why water can actually turn the white anhydrous copper 2 sulfate to blue and the blue hydrated Colbert 2 chloride into pink. So that is where the that is where the cold water comes in. So the general equation for this reaction is hydrocarbon, which is our candle, burns in oxygen to form water and carbon four oxide. So in conclusion, from the experiment we have just done, first of all, the candle wax is a compound of carbon and hydrogen only. It is in a group of compounds referred to as hydrocarbons. These are compounds containing carbon and hydrogen only as the only atom. So when they're initially burnt in air, they form carbon four oxide and steam, which is water. So those are the products of hydrocarbon. And there, it's not only candle wax. You also have other products, other hydrocarbons existing, such as petrol, uh, diesel, and kerosene. So in case maybe that is changed in maybe a question, instead of them bringing a candle wax, they bring any of these hydrocarbons, then we expect to get the same kind of product. Later on in Form 3, we are going to be looking at these hydrocarbons in, de in details, and you'll notice they're actually forming the same, same products. So next, we are going to look at what happens in this experiment if we do not use a sanction pump. We see that the sanction pump is very, very important. So some of the observations you notice if we do not use a sanction pump is the candle will go off. The second thing is we're going to see a deposition of the black solid. Actually, in this case, it's going to be more in comparison to our previous experiment. And then there will be no less liquid produced in tube A. And also there will be no white precipitate in tube B. Why would this observation occur in this manner? The reason why they occur in this manner is because there is an accumulation of gases on the future funnel. The suction pump helps to pull the gases across in the apparatus. The moment it's uh, not put on, it's going to mean that the product, that is carbon four oxide and steam produced, are going to accumulate on the future funnel, and then this will cause the candle to go off. And the incomplete combustion of the candle would cause the production of the carbon particles. So that is what cools off on the filter funnel and it forms the black specks. And then the amount of water and carbon dioxide produced would be very negligible because they are not able to pass through the apparatus. This is where now the suction pump comes in. So if they are not able to pass through the apparatus, then they are they are produced in negligible amounts. So next, we are going to look at one question in regards to what we have discussed. So study the setup. So this is the setup in the figure and answer the questions that follow. So let's study the setup. So we have a burning candle uh, on a filter funnel. The filter funnel is attached to a tube that goes to a YouTube. We can see the YouTube. In the YouTube, we have solid B. And then another tube leaves the YouTube, goes to another uh, test tube. And the test tube contains a calcium hydroxide solution. And then there's another tube that goes to apparatus C. So at the end of the experiment, solid B changed from white to blue. Solid B changed from white to blue. 
So first of all, let's look at the white to blue. We know that the compound that changes from white to blue is referred to as anhydrous copper 2 sulfate. So we are working with anhydrous copper 2 sulfate that is in the YouTube. So it changes from white to blue because there is water that is being produced. So Kano burns to produce water. So this water reacts with the anhydrous copper 2 sulfate and changes it to, to blue. So it moves from white to blue. This blue product is referred to as hydrated copper 2 sulfate. It is important for you to uh, specify the product. So that's the answer. So first of all, candle burns in air to produce water. This water reacts with the anhydrous copper 2 sulfate, which is white, and it changes to blue, which is also called hydrated copper 2 sulfate. Then we go to question B. The other products of burning candle formed a white precipitate with a calcium hydroxide solution. So we have this calcium hydroxide solution, the other product uh, formed a white precipitate. So the question is write an equation for the reaction. So we need to write the equation for the reaction between this calcium hydroxide and the carbon four oxide that is produced. So the equation will be calcium hydroxide plus carbon four oxide, carbon four oxide to form calcium carbonate, which is a white precipitate and water. So that is our equation. And then uh, the last question is state the role of apparatus C. So our apparatus C is actually the, actually the sanction pump. So the function of the sanction pump, it actually helps in pushing the air throughout the apparatus. We say that it ensures continuous supply of air in the apparatus. That is a function.